Are you looking for different ways and pathways to get in to the U.S. to get a U.S. license? Stay tuned as we talk to one international dentist who's on his way and, and on a new pathway to getting his dental license in the United States. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin on the new dentist podcast show where we talk about getting into dental school, getting into residency, and then getting into the U.S. to uh, to be licensed as a dentist. Be sure that you guys are uh, subscribing to the channel and then also hitting the notifications down below right over here so that you are informed when new videos are released on a weekly basis. Today, special guests all the way from Canada via Pakistan. We're going to be talking with Dr. Maz about uh, a new pathway or a pathway that he has selected to get into the U.S. and to do residency training in the U.S. It's called preceptorship, preceptorship. So we're going to be talking about that, um, about how he found out about it, um, why he's doing it. He's going to tell us a little bit about the program that he just got accepted to and he's going to be starting. And then he's also going to share with us some next steps. So be sure to listen all the way through the video. So let's get into it. Dr. Maz, thank you. Hi. Welcome. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really good. And thanks for the time. I really appreciate that. Well, thank you for the time, especially now that you are getting ready to uh, dive into this preceptor program. Let's talk a little bit about about who you are first. So please introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and a little bit about your background too. Okay, so first of all, my name is Maz and uh, I'm originally from Pakistan and a new immigrant to Canada. So I'm living right now here in Toronto. And um, Based on my background as a dentist back home right now, I'm just trying to pursue my uh, clinical dentistry path in the North America. Um, and I'm just uh, uh, here right now in Canada. I am, uh, I'm doing two kinds of jobs. So first is I'm a part-time preclinical instructor in the University of Toronto where I teach dental anatomy and occlusion to first year dental students. And the second thing that I do just for living is uh, I do temping job as a dental assistant. So what I do is like, I basically work with a temping agency and they send me to different dental offices uh, where I work as a dental assistant. So I do my shift and then they, or it's a basically like whoever do not have a dental assistant uh, for the day. So they just call me and I just go in and uh, uh, do my shift. Um, so it's pretty amazing. I'm actually keeping myself uh, in touch with the clinical dentistry via dental assisting. And at the same time, I'm doing academic like teaching to first year dental students. So there's nothing boring in Canada. So I'm just keeping myself in touch with uh, my profession. Absolutely, and that's great. That's a that's a great uh, great to know that you are very, sound like you're very very busy. <laughs> yeah, and on the top of that, if you have a family, baby, yeah, then, then you get super busy. <laughs> get super busy. That's right. Yeah. Fatherhood by itself is is no yeah. joke. So uh, yeah. so t tell us a little bit about why dentistry in the U.S. Because you're a dentist in Pakistan. So why why dentistry here in the U.S. Yeah, so right now I'm uh, actually I'm an immigrant to Canada, so I cannot practice my what I desire to do here in Canada. So in order to find for myself different pathways, so I came across one of this pathway, which is really, I think it's a really, I believe, and I, I trust this, that whatever I'm going to start is really, will really help me pursue my, my goal. And this is, I have a... Uh, that's why I'm doing like, a, and given that the U.S. has lots of opportunities and there are like 50 states and more than uh, too much as compared to Canada, there are lots of 
universities, programs, which offer and which are pretty international friendly. So that's why I'm pursuing my path in the US um, and hopefully get the license um, in North America and particularly in the US. So um, that's why I'm uh, trying to pursue this uh, preceptorship program. And it's, um, it is something that will really help me in the long run. So right. yeah. Right. Yeah. So 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 how, so let's talk about the preceptorship program. How, how did you find out about it? It's actually like nowadays, as you generally find everything on Google. So you <laughs> pretty much yeah. Uh, so basically, I will give you like some clues, like how to find out. So there are some word synonyms you can find on Google. So there's like preceptorship. There's like fellowship. There's externship and internships, right? So these four words are pretty much like uh, synonyms. And if you put it in the preceptorship in dentistry in the US, you will come across lots of options. Likewise, if you put fellowship in dentistry in the US, you will come across lots of uh, options. And the likewise for internship and externship, but so some universities offer preceptorship, some offers fellowship, but they are pretty much the same thing. All are like, I consider them as a pre-residency programs. So they're basically the, like the universities in the US, the program directors, they do not know how well you are trained back home. So they want to know you how well you are and how well you are doing in a pre-residency opportunity that has been given to you. So they want to evaluate it. And then on, based on that, they want to decide like, okay, we want this person in our residency program. And this is, I think, a good way to get a step into the door. Absolutely. And that's, and that's uh, one of the things that I talk about in my upcoming uh, in one of my courses about different pathways to getting a license uh, that are not necessarily always um, associated with having to do two or three or four years of dental school here in the U.S. But, you know, this preceptorship is definitely one of the uh, alternative pathways. So let's talk about the program. I, I, I know you've, you know, you did your research, you looked at different programs. Let's talk about the program uh, that you got into. So tell us a little bit about where you're going to be doing your preceptorship, um, how long it is, uh, the cost, and the type of experiences that you are uh, projected to receive during the period of time uh, that you're going to be doing it. Yeah, so actually I got accepted in a University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. It's a six months long preceptorship program in AEGD advanced education in general dentistry. Uh, uh, it is going to be like, actually it has two components, didactic and clinical, where the emphasis is more on the clinical part. And I would say this is a little unique program as compared to other preceptorships, uh, because in other programs, uh, they just let you observe and there's more of the observation but here in this program, it's the only program I believe so, uh, is that it gives you more emphasis on the clinical part. So what I would be doing is like, first of all, like I will go through the practice on minikins and I will be evaluated based on that. And after that, uh, the program director and the uh, clinical committee, they will, I will have to present to them uh, patient and if they approve it then they will let me start something on the they will let me start the patient care as well so I expect to do like in six months I expect to do maybe five to six or seven patients based on my clinical skills and my how I'm progressing through the program so basically uh, they will evaluate me they will see uh, what is my level of clinical expertise and how much I need improvement and uh, 
or so that once they evaluate me there based on that, that will give me a patient care. So it's from, I would say preclinical to clinical. So uh, it's really, I'm really excited about it because it was, I'm just coming back to my clinical practice soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I, and, I, and that's a good thing because it's a great transition to be able to do a program like this where you have not only didactic, but the clinical so that you can, like you said, share with the faculty, share with schools that mm -hmm. have uh, residency programs or have advanced standing programs. You're meeting with them face-to-face, one-on-one, mm -hmm. and they're getting to know you as a as an individual, but also as a clinician as well. I know some some schools and some programs they require that you do a, a bench test, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And and that's part of your, the application process. Have they indicated at University of Texas at, at Houston that um, that this preceptorship takes the place of a bench test that that is required? Yes, this is what I did during the interview. So when I went there for the interview, it was actually last year before COVID broke out. And, and that is the reason my program has been delayed. Uh, so I was supposed to start it last year, but it's because of the COVID it started uh, uh, this year. Right. Uh, so uh, actually when I went there for the interview, I, I had interview with uh, like a couple of uh, professors and then they asked me to prep on the crown and um, so they do take a bench test and I um, once they evaluated it they, based on that they like to select you uh, so they do have a bench test in this program uh, if uh, I'm not wrong there are other programs maybe they do not like uh, they do not take the bench test other preceptorships uh, and because they are not that clinical. So um, there's a little like every, every university has different programs and they are like structured differently. So this one is more clinical. So they want to take a bench test from you. Yes. Uh, and uh, as compared to other programs, like I know there's some, there some offered in Rochester, Eastman Dental Institute in California, San Francisco. Um, their fellowship in University of Kentucky, uh, but I I do not I, I I never been there, so I do not know exactly what they are doing. But uh, this one particularly take the bench test. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the time period six months. What's the cost for this preceptorship? It's a uh, total is like twenty five thousand, and uh, I believe it's a worth uh, investment. And because it's, it will give you a direction to go further and pursue your goal, and it will help you eventually get the license in the U.S. That's right. I think it's it's, it's uh, like the same way you do invest in business. So you this dentistry is your business, right? So you have to invest in it. So that's right, right. Yeah. The, and and the best investment is you or us as uh, as an as an individual. So. Right. Uh, it's a great investment and it's going to help you get <clears throat> to the next stage, the next level of yes. your uh, professional dreams and aspiration and targets. So um, exactly. that's a, uh, that's just part of the process, right? Yeah. Um, real quick, tell us about next steps. After you finish the six month program at UT Houston, what, what are your next steps? What are th some of the things that you're looking to yes. do and, and, and looking to, use this foundation of the preceptorship. Yes. So this uh, preceptorship, it gives you the foundation and it provides you many options after that. So one of the option for me is to do the AAGD residency right where I will be doing the preceptorship, um, which is like, hopefully uh, give me a great chance because you are there, they know you, they know you well and they see you, how you performing and progressing. So this is one of the great option, like oh, this is my first option to do an EGD residency. And the uh, other option I have like to do an advanced standing program. Uh, another option I have to do a specialty program right away, like maybe like perio, prosthodontics, um, they're pretty good programs. Um, uh, 
So these are the options. So my priority is to do the AG residency, keep my skills more polished in general dentistry. And then uh, I can go right away in practice or I can choose to go for a specialty as well. So uh, it depends on the time, right? So where you are standing then. Uh, so I believe this is a good way to start. So I definitely like recommend international graduates to you need to find a way for yourself to get into the system so getting into the system is the like it's a challenging and it's a hard thing but once you get into the system you it's go smooth after that so so if i if someone is trained outside of the us and canada so i would definitely recommend them doing this pre residency because it it really get, um, help you to get to know the system, get to know the US uh, dental setup. And, and I would also re recommend them to do the dental assistant, at least if you are in the US or in Canada, do the dental assistant because you get to know the dental offices, you get to know the private practice, how do they run, you get to know the dentists and how they're working, or what are tech what are the technologies they're using. So I definitely like uh, recommend them to do both of them, uh, both of these things. So, yeah, so. That's good. That's good, man. Well, you know, you have shared a lot of great information about this pathway, about this alternative way to get a U.S. license and get that U.S. training. Um, and you just share with us some great tips you guys that are listening and watching uh, if you guys have uh, have gotten some great value from listening to dr Maz, please go ahead and, and uh, hit that like button down uh, down below uh, to let us know that you are getting some value here dr Maz, hey man congratulations uh, thank, thank you. you for sharing this this pathway your pathway into you, getting a uh, u.s dental license and getting uh, u.s training uh, we wish you Continued success. I'm not going to say good luck. I always like to say continued success. Yes, you've been yes. successful all the, way, all the way up to this point, and you're going to continue to be successful. I know you're getting ready to start your program uh, in a couple of days, just waiting for some other uh, cl clarifications and documentations. But again, we appreciate you for sharing this information. You guys, check out this next video right here. Hopefully, this will help you as well. And Dr. Moss, we're going to follow you and, and check up on you and see how you uh, how the program was after six months as a kind of like an update. How's that sound? Yeah, that's really interesting. I really look forward to it because um, I would like to share with my experience with other uh, dentists and who those who want to be a dentist in the U.S. Yeah, so absolutely. That'll be great. Really, yep. Yep. That'll um, be great. So, guys, again, make sure you check out this next video. And uh, I'm going to say love, peace, and smiles. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks, Doc. Thank you.